Hi friends! I have a question that I'm curious about for myself, so I figured I would make a little video, share the results with you. What is the best vlogging lens for Fuji? Now, I don't have all of the options, but I do have a couple that I want to walk through, the things that I have available to me, and see what makes sense. Now to set the stage and give a little context, I use the Fuji X-T3 as my main camera, both for photo and video, in terms of vlogging. I mainly use this for vlogging while on some trips. My wife and I have a separate channel that is more about travel, so we're doing a lot of vlogging out on that. So I kind of need a versatile lens to figure out what the best is for that. And I've used a couple of options in the past, but I have a new option. So we're going to walk through those, do a little vlogging test, and see what we discover. Now, the kit lens, the 18 to 55, is one that I've used for a couple of things. This starts off at a 2.8, which is nice and shallow depth of field if you're at 18. However, the 18 works usually if it's one of us. If you're trying to get both of you in, it's a little tight. So this is one that I try to use a little bit sparingly for trying to get both of us in the shot. But having that reach of 55 definitely is nice. This lens also has optical image stabilization, which definitely is helpful because the X-T3 does not have in-body stabilization. So this kind of helps a lot with some of those shakes. But 18, which is the equivalent of a 27 millimeter on full frame, just sometimes is a little bit of a struggle. So that's one of our options and we'll put it to the test, see what we discover. The other one that we've used at times is the 16 millimeter 2.8. This is a very nice small compact lens. It's a little bit wider. And to me, it actually, those two millimeters makes a big difference. And again, 2.8, so you can get some decent shallow depth of field and gives a nice look that you're still showing some context to what you're doing and everything's not like completely blurred out, but uh, is also a little bit of separation for you. And again, for two of us being able to vlog in the same shot, uh, this is more helpful than the 18 to 55. This does not have any sort of stabilization and that's definitely a drawback because I, I know when I'm editing, those shots take a little bit more work on the stabilization front to make it happen. This also doesn't give you any sort of versatility, right? There's no zooming here. I can't get other shots. I have to swap lenses to maybe one of my other primes or even switch to this 18 to 55 to get some other shots. So uh, again, some pluses there and some drawbacks. We're gonna put it to the test though. And then the new one, which is already on the camera, is the 10 to 24. This is the new edition of this. It is weather sealed. So this lens is obviously wider, goes all the way to 10, which to me is probably too wide. It just kind of starts warping everything around you, but you can kind of sit probably more around a 14 millimeters on here and get that nice natural look without going too wide and be able to get both of us in the shot. Now the drawback here is this is F4, so you're not getting as much separation from the background. But to me, I think that's an okay trade-off for everything else that this lens that this lens is offering. And to me, this is one that I could use for vlogging in terms of getting that kind of shot of both of us, as well as being able to zoom into 24 millimeters, which is equivalent to about 36, and get some good photos, street photos while we're out traveling. And having kind of both options in one lens is something I'm excited about to test out. So this is a new lens for me. I have not tested this at all. So we're gonna put all three of these head to head, just you know, walking around a little bit here, uh, not really out on a trip at this moment, but we're gonna give them a try and see what happens. Also wanna call out that I do have the earth ND filters on these lenses. This is the ND2 to 400, and this is the 72 millimeter that goes here on this lens. And then I have the 58 millimeter that goes on the 1855. And then I just use some step up rings to get it down to the 49 millimeters of the 16 millimeter. So that's the kind of uh, front lens element width and how I make those all work. So it gives me some variability of being able to use those wider apertures uh, while we're outside in bright daylight. So let's get to it. So here we have the 10 to 24 
set at 14 millimeters. How is the wobble stabilization? I will not do anything in post. As well as the how wide of a screen? It's at f4, so shallow depth of field. What does that look like? All right, nice lens. So here's the 16 millimeter. This is at f2.8, so we should have a little bit more shallow depth of field, blurred background, bokeh. But this does have no image stabilization. So how's the wobble? How's that doing? And on to the next lens. All right, in the classic, the kit lens, the 18 to 55, this is set at 18 millimeters, which means I can get to f2.8 and has opti optical image stabilization. So again, no post-processing on the stabilization. How is it here? Just kind of walking through the park, shallowed up the field, but this is as wide as this lens can go. All right, I'm back from a little vlog test in a totally different setup because I have things set up for a different project that I'm working on, but wanted to give my final thoughts on these different lenses and what I'm going to be using. So again, the 10 to 24 is definitely the most wide, but the optical image stabilization didn't exactly solve everything. But I do think once I added the post stabilization, it was probably the smoothest. I think because it had the most room to play, kind of figure out what was happening, DaVinci Resolve was able to just kind of like crop in and figure that one out. And so to me, that looked the most smooth after some post stabilization. Then the 16 2.8 to me actually looked the best in terms of the overall look and feel that I like. The shallow depth of field is just because it could get to that 2.8. And then as I suspected, the 18 to 55 was just a little bit too cropped in. Now it worked because it was only me in the frame, but like I said earlier, I do a lot of vlogging with my wife and trying to get both of us in the frame. And so that just was gonna to be too tight for both of us. And even that the stabilization, although it does have OIS, again, just wasn't the best. So that's the way that I interpreted kind of what I was looking at. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of those sample clips, if you would maybe pick a different lens than me, or if there's another one out there that I should give a try. But until next time, I'm gonna go make something, I hope you do too.